If there is a theme, it was set that first weekend. The veneer of a block party with a menacing edge. I'm staying. I'm not leaving until the mandates are gone. There were Nazi flags, 3% or white nationalist ones too, the imprison and hang Trudeau signs, and the organizers' written demands. They, along with the governor general, form a new government. And of course, the horns. Thousands poured into the streets, some threatening a homeless shelter to get food, others digging in. As malls and stores shuttered, hate crimes complaints would skyrocket. On day six, convoy organizers, an assortment of Western separatists and conspiracy theorists, say they aren't going anywhere until all COVID mandates are gone. A pushback against what they see as government overreach. Day seven, and they are dug in, building a soup kitchen in a nearby park as GoFundMe moves to cut off their fundraising. Switch sides and recognize what's going on. On day 10, Ottawa declares an emergency, pleading for extra officers that wouldn't arrive for another week. They carried out their first raid, seizing fuel from what was becoming a key and growing protest support base. It would make little difference. On day 11, in Windsor, a smaller group would cause economic damage at the Ambassador Bridge. The Ottawa convoy would pull its demand that the federal government be replaced by an unelected movement. While protester numbers dwindled, key figures would emerge. People with police and military experience bolstering their facilities, tents, wooden kitchens, soon hot tubs, games and bouncy castles. By day 15, the start of the third weekend, Ontario declares a state of emergency. I call it a siege, because that's what it is. And the protest, smaller on weekdays, surges to 5,000 people. Feeling abandoned by their police, some Ottawa residents take action themselves, blocking protest reinforcements, as Ottawa's 911 is bombarded by fake calls from the US. Day 18, and RCMP at the Coots border crossing in Alberta raid a protest and seize an arsenal of weapons, charging four with conspiracy to kill Mounties. It is now clear that there are serious challenges to law enforcement's ability to effectively enforce the law. Soon after, the federal government invokes the Emergencies Act. Ottawa's police chief resigns as a surge of officers arrive. OPP, RCMP, and for what's believed to be the first time, Quebec officers. Final warnings now issued to protesters. Call my wife. On day 21, arrests in the no-go zone begin and continue through the evening. David Common, CBC News, Toronto.